I hope that everybody's week has gotten off to a good start, and we've made it Tuesday so far, and hope that everybody is doing well. And with it being Tuesday, we want to look at another psalm in the book of Psalms, and today we're going to look at number 45, Psalm 45. And this is an interesting psalm, Um, not exactly like all the other psalms we see in the book of Psalms, Um, but it's unique for its apparent double meaning. The really when you read the psalm, it seems to be you know a psalm about a wedding and a celebration of a king and his bride and um, rejoicing in this event and this great honor of a wedding and uh, the king and his bride being together and brought together. And it probably had application as a wedding song at the time it was written. But there is a deeper greater meaning to this psalm that we actually find as the Hebrew, the Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews chapter 1, that this psalm is actually also a messianic psalm, a psalm about the Son of God, a psalm about our King, a song about the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Anointed One, Jesus Christ, who came to save us, Jesus, our King, our Messiah, and His Bride, the Church, His people, So let's read this together. Psalm 45. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So already a time of of joy, of rejoicing. You know, again, my says my heart is overflowing with a good theme concerning the king. My tongue is like a pen of a ready skilled writer and I'm going to make these things known. And so he begins verse 2, you are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty one, with your glory and your majesty. And in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth, humility, and righteousness. And your right hand will teach you awesome things. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. And so here this praise of a glorious king and how he's fairer than men, the graces on his lips, God has blessed you forever. His, he's the mighty one with his sword and his arrows riding with truth and humility and righteousness, awesome things. That's how he's describing the king. And now goes on to describe his throne. Verse six, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad. King's daughters are among your honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in gold from Ophir. And so he's talking about the throne of God and the righteousness and the scepter. And this is actually what is quoted um, in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 1, of Jesus who came, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the anointed one, Jesus who is now on the throne of his kingdom forever with a scepter of righteousness and his glory. And so it continues, verse 10, listen, listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also in your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Because he is your Lord, worship him. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. 
The virgins, her companions who follow her, will be brought to you. With gladness and rejoicing, they shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. Instead of your fathers shall be your sons, whom you shall make princes in all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people will praise you forever and ever. Again, this whole scene describing, you know, a royal, a royal wedding, a king being betrothed and and being wedded and the glory and honor and the beauty of it all. And certainly it would have application to the royal weddings and such back then of that time. But again, What we see here is the greater theme, that theme being of our Messiah, of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and his bride, the church, who he died for, he rose for, the people that he has redeemed, the people he has saved. And so we see in this the glory and the power of, of Christ, of Jesus, of God, his throne, his kingdom, and the beauty of his church. The beauty of this this um, wedding between the lamb and his bride, the king and his bride, Jesus and his church. And what a glorious, beautiful thing that is. So let's think about that as we read Psalm 45. And we think of the glory of Jesus, the glory of the Messiah, and our relationship with him today. Knowing that Jesus reigns on the throne forever and ever with a scepter of righteousness. And we want to be his people and be pleasing to him. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for sending us the Messiah, his anointed one, our King and our Savior. God bless.